Hey people, how's it going? I'm the Broken Puppet and welcome back to my channel. Today's a really cool one. I'm going to show you guys how to color in the uh, three grid heads from my heads and how to procreate brush set with tattoospace.com. It's a really cool set. It's got 30 different animal heads and each one has a 12 stage tutorial. So if you like my tutorials, it's a really cool learning tool you're going to love. So make sure you head over there. That's tattoospace.com and the link is down in the description below. That's really cool. I'm going to show you guys how to shade this in. If you don't have the app, you don't have procreate, you can always just learn to shade from this. It's a really cool learning tool as well. I'm going to set the top layer to reference. That's the layer that's got the line work on. By having it as reference, it means every layer underneath is going to select from that layer. So if you just click on there, you see reference, and then just click on reference. It's a really simple way of doing it. Now, the first grid ahead is a metric, so I'm going to put the symmetry tool on. So if you go to the top, you go to there, you can see it's got the um, symmetry options. And just make sure you select the symmetry, put it down the middle. You know, you don't have to do it, but it makes it easier because you can draw both sides at the same time. So you basically get for it doubly quick. And just click on there, click on draw and assist on the layer. If draw and assist isn't selected, it won't draw on both sides. And then what I'm gonna do just here, I'm gonna put in some black, I'm gonna put it in between the gaps. So I'm just selecting the area so it doesn't go over that middle part of the face. And just putting that black in between the gaps to begin with. It's gonna give us a little kind of base layer to sort of shade off of. Because the idea is a little gaps in between these lines is where the hair kind of connects and you don't want it to be seen, you want it to be black. So where you kind of see the empty space is where you want some black in between it. So you can see here a little kind of layout here. And on the center part there, just here, we've got a gap again. I'm going to black out to there. And it's going to go through those lines. So you don't, want, you don't want to see the bottom part of the lines. It's going to fade up into those. Now, each kind of fade is going to be fairly quick, which is going to be really typical of traditional kind of sort of tattooing and shading. You know, it's very quick to the point. It's very dark and then a very quick transition. I'm going to show you a few different styles. I'm going to do, each one I'm going to do slightly, you know, slight differently on each one of them. Sort of show you some different kind of ways of doing it. But in general, that is kind of how the shading is generally done with traditional tattoos. So you can see me, I'm building this up on all the hair on the outside now. The only part of the lines you want to see, the bits on the very outside. So like the very tips. And that's basically where the hair comes off. So kind of like, you know, the hair strands as it come, kind of pokes out. Now the inner mouth, I'll get some black behind these teeth to get a sense of depth. And then that right part of the pack, just above the tongue, I want that blacked out. Because basically that's the furthest part of the mouth, so I want that to be the darkest. A little bit black just underneath the tongue, just kind of a bit more kind of contrast. And we're getting a bit of shading in the face, so a little bit behind, you know, uh, just underneath the curves of the eyes. Just a nice little fade, and anywhere it's kind of like a bit of a corner. So just here on the cheeks, in the kind of corner areas, we're just fading a bit of black into these bits. I'm going to do the bottom parts just here. And the uh, bits above the eye, I'm going to put some shading inside. So a bit of the, a bit different to the other ones, it's going to go on the inside and not touch the edges. So you see here, just kind of flicking it inwards a little bit on the sides. It's basically because there's nothing but kind of negative space around it, so I want it on the inside. Now inside the middle part of the nose, I'm going to put some black in the uh, nostrils. And just around the top part of the nose, I'm going to put a little bit of black in the inside part. And just down the middle part, I'm going to go to the edge, just to kind of get a sense of curvature. And this will kind of make it feel like it's sitting forward, as opposed to being further back. The same with the side cheeks here. It just kind of has a bit more kind of curvature to it. And now the gums and a bit of black here, I'm just going to put a little bit of black just behind there. Again, we're just adding a bit of kind of contrast. Now, it's very important to remember, you want a lot of dark shading in these kind of style tattoos. You know, if you got Neo Trader Realistic, it's a very different kind of, kind of game, but um, traditional kind of style, you know, there's a lot of black in there and you really want to put that in there. A little bit of black in the ears. And that's pretty much the uh, shading done on the first head. And now I'm going to go to the layer beneath it. You basically want to go line work, shading, and then color. So the color sits underneath everything. So the, the, uh, layer, work, the layer underneath, I'm going to set that, click on it and click draw and assist again to make sure you're selecting everything. So it's drawn on both sides. And I'm going to put some red in the mouth here and a little bit of red just uh, to the side past of the eye. Now the tongue is also going to have red, but I'll do the tongue separately because I want a little white line around the edge. That's going to separate so it doesn't feel like it's all just one big blob of red. And now the little bits underneath the eyes and the gums, I'm going to do like this nice kind of sort of like lilac -y purple. You don't want it too strong. You don't like a very, very strong kind of purple. It's more of a kind of muted kind of tone, so more of a kind of lilac. The lips around the outside, I'm going to have like a nice kind of golden effect and I'm going to do this also in the eyes. Now, I don't use too many colors with traditional, you kind of want limited colors, you know, having a few kind of throughout, it kind of makes everything kind of feel joint and connected, you know, so you want to be quite selective with your coloring. So just put a bit here, I might put a little bit of color in the teeth sometimes. I'm going to flick a little bit of brown just in the middle of these ones. Like I said, I will show you a few different variations around the other ones as well. But for this one, just a little bit of brown, just kind of flicking through it. And that's generally how you do the first head. So we're gonna to come to the second one now. Now this one isn't symmetric, so we're gonna click on there. I'm gonna turn off that drone assist. We do not want our drone assist on. So once that's turned off, we're gonna go back onto the shading layer. I'm gonna select the outside, so you're not selecting the face. The face has basically got a solid line on the outside, so it shouldn't select any part of the face when you click on this. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna put a little bit of black just in between those hairlines now. So it kind of eliminates that negative space we have on show. 
Let's do this to all of them. And just make sure it is solid black you do in this kind of area. So once we've got that, it's basically separating the uh, connection areas. And once we've got that, we're going to put a little fade just now on the inside parts of these. Very soon as I've done the first one. You know, I, I generally turn the airbrush up a little bit when I'm doing these parts. So the initial line part will be thinner and these will be a little bit thicker. But just play around with different areas require different kind of thicknesses. You know, those sort of, I feel there's one sort of set kind of size where the airbrush you can have to stick to. You can kind of play around with it. And you can use the pressure sensitivity to really kind of like, you know, play with that as well. Like, you know, if, if you're pressing it softer, it's going to come out softer. Um, any little bit you kind of overlap, don't worry too much. You know, like sometimes it's easier to overlap and then just erase so you get a nice even shade. Like just here, I sort of went over that. So I've got a nice even part for the hair and I can just erase the in, inside the ear part. You can also do like a selection um, using the uh, manual selection tool. You know, we select certain parts. I will do that further on. Um, but in general, like a lot of time, if it's just like a little red eye, sometimes it's just easier to just rub it out afterwards. The same technique as before, I'm going to put some shading in the mouth because I want the mouth to kind of feel like it's got a sense of depth. And the inner part I'm going to do quite dark. This one's got like a, this kind of sort of gummy part on the inside, which everyone hasn't because of the angle. And I'm going to get a little bit on the top, a little bit from the bottom, so I get like a little highlight just through the center of it. And I come to the face, I'm going to do this one ever so slightly different to the first one, just so you get a sense of, you know, how to do things differently. So this one I'm going to sort of like, you know, a bit, a bit more kind of sort of fade around the outside. And I'm going to have this sort of coming from here. So you're not going to have this sort of dark shadow coming from behind the nose on that side part of the cheek. It's going to come in the other, in the, kind of like in the opposite direction in a way. Now the top parts of the eyes here are going to be quite similar. I'm going to be a bit of shadow just here above the eye. And this one, because it's got a bit of an overlap, I'm going to sort of just go around the edge just a little bit like so. The nose is going to be fairly similar. I'm just going to colour in the nostrils and just put like just a general bit of fade over it. And this outside area is going to get a very simple sort of shadow just on the outside part. And then the inside face, uh, well, sorry, yeah, the chin bit just here. I'm going to sort of shade the chin bit in. And then here I'm going to go over this line and I'm going to raise the outside area. Same thing I've done on the face there. So this is where it kind of varies from the previous uh, symmetric version. So in the previous version, I sort of shaded outwards and this kind of time I'm shading inwards. It kind of makes the face feel a bit more kind of curved that way. You know, both are very viable ways of doing it, but just both very different kind of takes. You know, one's the complete opposite to the other one. But yeah, I mean, you can take either approach to it. Either approach will look good. So don't sort of fully have to do like one or the other. You can just do whichever one you kind of fancy. You'll hybrid of both if you want. So yeah, again, I'm just going a little bit black around the outside now, so it kind of face into the hair, as well the other one didn't quite have that way. It's kind of like a very hard edge. A little bit black in the ears. I think that's the black done, I think, now. So yeah, we're going to go on to the, uh, the colouring now. Now, I accidentally done that shading on the wrong layer, so don't worry about that. Just pretend I've done that on the shading layer. I accidentally done, accidentally done it on the colour one. If you do it on the wrong layer, just create another layer and put it underneath. You know, it's a very easy fix. Or just cut around it and paste it back into the uh, other layer. Now, same as the other, I'm putting the red in the mouth, and when I do the tongue, I'm going to do that little white light. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So, yeah, when I do the tongue, I'm moving a little white highlight edge. You know, it just kind of helps separate the tongue from the inside the mouth. And I like everything to kind of feel a little bit separate in a way, in that way, but still kind of connect up with the same color scheme. Now, I'm, going to zoom, I'm not going to zoom in too much, you know, because I want to try to keep it nice and simple here so you can see everything nice and clearly. But when you're doing it, feel free to zoom in as much as you want. If you want to zoom in like as close as possible, where you can see the entire screen with one little segment then do that, you know, that's what it's there for. Now, the only reason I'm not zooming in too much is to kind of show it more clearly. Now, purple inside the gum and then inside the, that little cheek inside area as well. And then the eyes and the lip, I'm gonna do yellow again. So I'm gonna stick the same kind of color, uh, color scheme for all three of these. And now the teeth is gonna be the difference here. I'm gonna do these teeth like a golden edge from the top. So it's a little yellow, just kind of fading from the tips. I really like doing that. Um, it just varies up from the previous one. I've done like, you know, the brown kind of flicking the other way. And then onto the last one. So back onto the shading. Again, this one isn't symmetric, so there's no need to turn on the symmetry tool for this one. We're going to press the selection tool around the outside. And again, we're just going to start off with by putting the lines in between those hairlines. Now, this just builds out the foundation, just like we've done on the other ones. It just makes it much easier to kind of build the shade off, you know, just eliminate, eliminate those negative spaces. And once you've got that, you can sort of build up the uh, bigger sort of shadow in between them. Now again, like I said with the airbrush tool, you know, you can use any kind of shading tool you want. The airbrush is just one of the ones. You know, a lot of time I tend to use the uh, spray paint tool as well. That's my favorite. Um, but yeah, you can vary the size now. Don't sort of feel like you have to stick to one size. You can really play around with different sizes for it. Now, I'm being pretty quick at this. Remember, you can sort of take your time. You know, you can sort of add, you know, any kind of red you want as well. You know, you, I mean, feel free to copy exactly how I do it here, you know, but don't sort of like feel you have to kind of stick to it. You know, this is just a guide. 
this isn't 100 percent you know kind of like it has to be done this way you know you could do these heads a hundred different ways and look at a hundred different kind of sort of styles and they could all look really cool now it's the good thing with these kind of designs there's many ways to do these so again i'm just picking out the corner areas just a nice quick transition with the black you know you can't really go wrong with it. it's just like a really nice way of doing things going to black on the inside part here again just not touching the outside part and that one i put a bit more of kind of curvature on it which i quite liked now here i just put a very kind of simple kind of sort of fade in between it you know it's a bit kind of longer than i would normally go with a fade a little bit of extra around the nose and then where i went over the i'm just going to erase that part around the outside area as well so I said, sometimes it's easier just kind of like putting the big sort of shades first and just come back and erase afterwards. You know, don't feel like you have to kind of keep shrinking it down, just avoid doing that. Just go over the top and just rub it out. That's the good thing with like Procreate and Digital. You can do that. It's very easy to get 100% perfect erase. Now the same sort of technique just here. I mean, a few areas aren't quite on show in this one. You're not going to have as much purple and stuff. You know, but I'm going to have red on the tongue, red in that little bit behind the eye. The yellow lips kind of fade off halfway through. So as it gets there, I'm just going to fade it. And just a little bit of purple and a little bit of gum you can see and a little bit just underneath the eye. Now the teeth I'm going to do the same thing, that's a little bit of golden bit on the edge, just like so. And then voila, that's how you do gorilla heads people. You know, I hope you like it. You know, if you like it, definitely check out my Procreate brush set. You know, I said it's got 30 different animal heads on there for all, the, all kinds of animals. You have gorillas, you know, wolves, tigers, leopards, everything like that. But for now people, I'm the Broken Puppet and I'll see you next time. Peace.